Hello people, welcome to Gurukla. I am Jai. So today in this video we are going to see about the free space path loss model. So this video is going to have two parts. So in the first part we will be seeing the formulation of the Fry's equation and in the later part of the video we will be seeing how the Fry's equation is used for uh, modulating the path loss model. So without any further delay let's get into today's video and as usual if you like this video do press the like button if you unlike it press the unlike button so that i'll consider that as uh, feedback and if you have not yet subscribed please consider subscribing to this channel so by setting up the environment so first of all to start off with we have to define certain variables in order to take it further our derivations so i will set up the environment first so here we are going to set up we are going to consider a transmitting antenna and then we are going to consider a receiving antenna over here and we are also going to assume that the transmitting antenna is going to have the power of pt and the gain of the transmitting antenna will be represented by gt and similarly the power at the receiving antenna will be represented by pr and the gain of the receiving antenna will be represented by gr and the distance between the transmitting antenna and then the receiving antenna is represented by D. So these are all the various uh, variables which we have to define uh, as in first stage to continue our derivations. So PT stands for uh, it's a power applied to the transmitting antenna and GT represents the gain of the transmitting antenna and PR represents the power received at the receiving antenna, GR represents the gain of receiving antenna and D represents the distance between the transmitter and receiving antenna and sometimes in some literature it will be represented as transmitter receiver separation as well. And in addition to these uh, uh, variables, so we are also going to have uh, certain assumptions over here. The first assumption which I am going to make here is, I am going to consider that the antennas are lossless. So if I say that antennas are lossless, I am going to consider both the antennas, the transmitting antenna and then the receiving antenna is both considered to be a lossless antenna. So that, so whatever the power that I am applying over here, the same power is going to be radiated from the transmitting antenna. So that is what I mean by the lossless antennas. So any loss that is uh, absorbed in the transmitter side is considered to be zero which means I am going to consider the lossless antenna which means my signal is not going to get attenuated in any aspect. So that is the first assumption which I make as an initial stage and later on we will be considering all the parameters once we have formed uh, particular equations. The second assumption what I am going to make here is I am going to consider the antennas are isotropic. So you very well know what isotropic antennas are. So the isotropic antenna is going to radiate an equal gain irrespective to the direction. So this is the radiation pattern for an isotropic radiator. You could see that it uh, has an spherical radiation pattern and the gain is going to be constant which means it will going to give an unit gain in all the directions wherever it is placed. So that is the second assumption whatever I have taken. And one more assumption is we have considered that there is no obstacles between the transmitter and then the receiver. As the name says we are going to formulate free space propagation environment. I have not considered any um, obstacles in between transmitter and then the receiver. So obviously we are going to consider only the line of sight signal and we are not considering any of the multipath components over here. And of course this model will be well suited for uh, communications such as satellite communications where you will have only line of sight and the reflecting signals will not be there in that particular thing. So the free space propagation model is more suited for modeling the satellite communication kind of environments. So the main aim of this particular derivation we are going to march towards finding the value of the amount of signal that can be effectively received at the receiver end. So this value. So this PR that is the amount of received power at the receiving antenna. So we are going to derive towards finding the value of PR. So in order to identify or in order to calculate what is the maximum amount of power that I could receive at the receiver side. First I should know what amount of power that I have transmitted at the transmitter side. So first of all we will start observing from the transmitter side. So 
transmitter side what could be the power that i have transmitted is defined by using the term we call it as power density so when i say power density so power density is the measure of amount of power per unit volume so i will take pd as the power density and that is defined by mathematically it is represented as power received over surface area so here when i am talking about the power received i am talking from the transmitter side so i am going to consider only be only the transmitting antenna and we know that the amount of power that is feeded to the transmitter by the feed line is what we have considered as pt and then the surface area here i am going to consider the surface area as sphere because we have assumed that the antennas are isotropic so that the isotropic antenna will have a spherical radiation pattern so that the area of uh, sphere is 4 pi t squared so that i will get the power density equation like this so pd is equals to pt which is actual power that i fed to the transmitting antenna over surface area that is 4 pi d squared which is area of sphere and we all know that this equation is valid only for the isotropic antenna we have made an assumption that we are using isotropic antennas but in real time situations we are not going to use isotropic antennas so that uh, we'll be using directional antennas so what do you mean by directional antennas the gain of that particular antenna will be higher in one particular direction so in other words what i could say is it will not have the unit gain so uh, we cannot take that the gain value is equals to one anymore so that we will try to slightly re-modify the above equation the power density equation considering the unit gain so when you consider this particular radiation pattern this is the radiation pattern for dipole antenna so you could see that the gain of this particular dipole antenna is maximum in these two directions and the gain is very minimum or even zero on this particular directions so it is very much important to consider the gain of the particular antenna when we are talking about a directional antennas so when I rewrite the power density equation by considering the gain of the transmitting antenna, I will get that the power density is equals to Pt over 4 pi d squared times Gt. So where Gt represents the gain of the transmitting antenna. So now I have decided that this is the maximum power or the power which I am going to transmit from the transmitter side. So that is all about we have to observe from the transmitter side. So once we know the power that we transmitted from the transmitter side, we could happily derive what will be the received power at the receiver end. So now we will start observing the equation from the receiver side. So receiver will receive the signals effectively based on a particular term we call it as effective aperture. So receiving antennas receiving capability will greatly decided by the effective aperture of an antenna so when i say effective aperture in antenna theory so it is the measure of how effectively an antenna is receiving the radiated power so that is denoted by the letter ae that is effective aperture and it is mathematically defined by the power received over the power density which means the transmitted power so here the power received now we are talking from the perspective of receiver side so that the power received at the receiving antenna is what we defined as pr so the effective aperture can be defined by ae is equals to pr over pd pd stands for the power density that means the transmitted power which we have already calculated over here so now i will try to slightly modify this particular equation since i am marching towards finding out the value of this pr i will try to slightly modify this equation so that i will get pr is equals to pd times ae so now I know the value for the PD which I have already calculated over here so now by substituting the value of this speed this power density over here my equation will be like PTGT over 4 pi d squared times AE so now it is very much important to define or to write uh, effective aperture in relation with gain and then the size of the antenna so that the effective aperture will be uh, reflected in the size of the antenna and as well as the gain of the particular antenna so it will be very much useful and it will be very much uh, 
reasonable if we represents this effective aperture in terms of gain and then the wavelength so the relation between the effective aperture and then the gain can be given as f uh, lambda squared over 4 pi times g where the lambda represents the wavelength and you you all know that the formula for wavelength is c by f where f is the frequency and which the wavelength will define the size of an antenna and you could observe from this equation that your effective aperture is directly proportional to the gain of the antenna so when if i increase the effective aperture the gain is also going to get increased and if i and the vice versa is also possible over here so now i know the value for effective aperture in terms of wavelength and then the gain so now by replacing this particular value in my equation received power equation i'll get ptgt over 4 pi d squared so this is for the power density and this lambda squared divided by 4 pi times gr and this is for my effective aperture so now i will try to slightly rearrange all the terms like this so now i got so pr i mean the amount of power that i received from the receiver side is equals to pt gt times gr into lambda squared over 4 pi d the whole squared times l so here i have considered the losses as well so since the loss and then the power received is inversely proportional i have included the loss factor in the denominator side so when the loss is getting increased and obviously my received power is going to get decrease so that is the reason why the loss is included at the denominator side and now this fancy equation is what we call it as fry's free space equation so this free space equation will play an vital role in formulating the path loss model which means the free space path loss model in our later videos so this video will represents the formulation of the fry's free space equations so we will take this fry's free space equation and we will try to observe certain uh, things which the fry's free space equation tells us so considering the fry's free space equation you know what are all the terms that is written over here the variables p t g t g r the lambda squared lambda is nothing but the wavelength and the l that is represented over here is the loss and d is nothing but the distance between the transmitter and then the receiver so there are certain inferences which we could observe from this equation so first one is so the received power decays at the rate of square of distance between the antenna so when we consider this pr i'll come to this d later on so this pr is the received power and you could see that the received power is inversely proportional to d squared so which we could conclude that the received power will decay at the rate of square of distance between the antennas which means the transmitter and then the receiving antennas and the second inference what we could take is the received power is represented as a function of distance between transmitter and then the receiver since this particular d factor which means the distance between the transmitter and the receiver greatly defines the amount of power received at the receiver side we should represent the fry's equation as a function of distance between transmitter and then the receiver so that's the reason why we have written pr of d and you could see these particular terms pt gt so these two terms the product of transmitted power and then the transmitted gain is what we refer to as effective isotropic radiated power and we often used to abbreviate that as eirp so eirp is nothing but the maximum power that is radiated and it is compared with isotropic radiation and the unit for this particular thing is dbi which is nothing but db gain with respect to isotropic antenna and sometimes we will not be using uh, isotropic radiator in practical situations and instead we will be using an half wave dipole antenna in such cases we will be taking erp which means effective radiated power instead of effective isotropic radiated power so if you consider effective radiated power uh, the power is radiated will be compared to half wave dipole antenna instead of isotropic antenna then the unit will be dbd which means db gain with respect to dipole antenna so these are the various inferences which we, we could get from the fry's equation and also you could see that the received power is directly proportional to the terms transmitted power transmitting antenna gain and the receiving antenna gain so whenever 
these terms are increased the gain of transmitting receiving antenna or the power of the transmitting antenna then you could achieve the increase in the received power and at the same way when you increase the distance or when you increase the loss between the transmitting and then the receiving antenna and your receiving antenna power will fall down and also it is somewhat related to the size of the antenna as well lambda is the wavelength and the wavelength will uh, contribute in the size of the antenna design as well so the size of the antenna is also considered in writing the PR equations so that's all about in this particular video so in order to sum up this particular video we have uh, tried to observe the formulation of Fry's free space equation in two factors the first of all we started off from the transmitter side so in transmitter side we just define the power density with of isotropic antenna and then in most of the practical situations we might have uh, the non-isotropic antenna so that we have to consider the gain factor as well so that we redefine the total power transmitted at the transmitter side including the gain factor so this is all about the transmitter side and coming to the receiver side we just defined what will be the received power by considering the effective aperture and we just stated what how uh, effective aperture can be represented uh, in terms of uh, lambda and then the gain and finally we derive the equations PR is equals to PTGTGR into lambda squared divided by 4 pi d squared times L and so this particular equation is what we call it as Fry's free space equation so that's the end of the video the remaining thing which means the second part of this video will cover how do we formulate path loss model free space path loss model by considering this Fry's free space equation into account so that will be the second part of this particular video and the link is given in the top right corner you can check out the video of this so so do consider subscribing to this particular channel so until then happy learning see you